Okay, everybody stand up. Stand up, stand up, stand up, stand up. Sit down, sit down, sit down. And then stand up once more and then sit down. You'll understand why I'm getting you to do that in a second. Okay, so we've heard a lot this morning about some of the future trends for treating osteoarthritis or treating arthritis. Um, and I think there's some exciting stuff there, but my job and, and Dr. Bostick's job is to bring you back to reality and to talk about some of the things that you can be doing right now to live a good life with arthritis. So why are we talking about arthritis? And in, in particular to my talk, why are we talking about osteoarthritis? The reason I've picked osteoarthritis is that it's the most common form of arthritis. The reason we're talking about it is that it is the most common reason that we become inactive as we age. And that inactivity leads to your, an increased risk of other diseases, which ultimately increases your risk of death. And in fact, there was a very interesting scientific paper that was published just last week to show that a diagnosis of knee osteoarthritis is an independent predictor of death. Okay, so it's important because it's the beginning of a long downward spiral that ends somewhere that we don't all really want to go. Okay, now the good news is you don't have to go there, but whether you go there or not depends to a large degree on what you do and what you don't do. So what do the experts say that we should do if we have osteoarthritis? There's really good news here. There is an incredible amount of research that's been done around the world, and the majority of organizations that write clinical guidelines for treatment for osteoarthritis agree 100% what we should do. The bad news isn't that we don't know what to do. The bad news is that we're not doing it. And there's a lot of reasons why. What should we do? What do the experts say? Basically, the first line of treatment for osteoarthritis and the first thing that absolutely everybody who has a diagnosis of osteoarthritis should get before they get medication, before they have the referral for surgery, is education, exercise therapy, and if appropriate, weight management. Now we know not everybody is going to get where they want with just those three things. So sometimes, in addition to that first line of treatment, We'll have a situation where you need some pain medication, where you need an assistive device, like a cane or a, or a brace, or you may have to undergo some passive treatments. And without a doubt, there are a few people, after going through that first and that second line of therapy, that have to go on to have surgery and perhaps have their joint replaced. Now, why is the order so important? The reason that the order is important is that we've got research to show us that if you do the first line, you are way less likely to need medications and way less likely to have to have your joint replaced. And if you don't do exercise therapy, education, and weight management, you are much more likely to need pain medication and need your joint replaced. So let's talk about this first line of treatment because really it's what you can do today if you want to live a good life with arthritis. So what do I mean by education? Basically, we're talking about maybe a couple one-hour sessions with a healthcare professional who knows about arthritis that can tell you about the disease and how you're supposed to manage your life with it. What's really important is that that's an interactive session where you can ask questions and get the information you need about your own unique situation. What about the exercise piece, exercise therapy? What do I mean by that? Basically, think of it as prescribed exercises with content and dosage that's dependent upon your individual needs. So it's really important to differentiate between physical activity and exercise therapy. Physical activity is what we do to keep ourselves healthy, to reduce our risk of disease. And we know that every human being on this planet, whether they have arthritis or not, or some other disease, requires 30 minutes of physical activity every single day. And at least on two days a week, that 30 minutes needs to, be, needs to have 20 minutes of more vigorous activity. We need that regardless. Exercise therapy, on the other hand, are exercise that we use to treat disease. It is prescribed. It has a dosage, it's very similar to medication, okay? And you can't get exercise therapy from anyone other than somebody that was trained to give you exercises to treat disease. And that, in most cases, is a physiotherapist or sometimes an occupational therapist if we're talking maybe about hand osteoarthritis. 
So the way that we get physical activity is, you know, we might go walking, we might walk the dog, we might dance, we might play a sport, we might go to the gym. But exercise therapy will be something that's prescribed, and the types of exercises that we do, we sometimes refer to them as neuromuscular exercises, or weight-bearing, or non-weight-bearing, or impact, or range of motion, or strength exercises. Now, the thing about exercise therapy is that initially it needs to be supervised. And this isn't because someone's trying to take your money. It needs to be supervised because you have to learn some things. One of the things that you have to understand is how to control your dosage. So sometimes you need more and sometimes you need less, and it depends. And you've also got to learn how to move correctly and how to have good quality of movement. And you, you need some supervision to be able to do that. Now that supervision can be one-on-one -on -one with your therapist or it can be in a group setting. Um, there is a program called the GLAD program that has been shown in research trials to increase function and reduce pain with people that have osteoarthritis. And the only reason I bring it up is that it's currently being rolled out across the country. And so it's something that you may hear about. The other really important piece about the initial supervision is that if you have osteoarthritis and you start exercising, you're gonna feel pain. And what you need to understand is that it is perfectly okay to have pain when you exercise. Yes, I said that it's perfectly okay to have joint pain when you exercise, as long as that pain remains below a five or a six out of 10, so a sort of an acceptable level, and within 24 hours of exercising, it goes back to the pre-exercise level. But as long as it stays below a five or a six and it goes back to the pre-exercise level in about 24 hours, you will start to find that you can exercise with less pain and you will start to have less pain at rest. Okay? And that's a tough concept. And sometimes you need some support in figuring how to do that. And that's why you need the supervision. So why is exercise so important? One of the first tissues that starts to break down with osteoarthritis is cartilage, which is the, the tissue that covers the ends of our bones. And cartilage is unique to our body because it doesn't get its food the way that most of our tissues get its food. Most of our tissues get their food through our blood supply. But cartilage doesn't have a blood supply. So the way that it gets its food is slightly different. Now the food that cartilage needs is contained within the joint fluid or the synovial fluid. And cartilage is sort of like a, a firm sponge. When you squish a sponge, you squish the fluid out of it. And when you release the sponge, the fluid comes back in, right? You squish, fluid goes out, you release, the fluid comes back in. When the fluid comes back in, it brings the nutrition with it. How do we squish and release our, our cartilage? We move our joints, we get up and down out of our chair, we jump up and down, okay? We have to have squishing and releasing. If you don't do that, you are starving your cartilage of the very thing that it needs to be healthy. But if you learn how to appropriately load your joints, and that's where the exercise therapy comes in, you actually can give your cartilage a fighting chance. So what can you do today to live a good life with arthritis? Number one, you need that 30 minutes of physical activity every day, however you wanna do it. And you know initially it might be three sessions of 10 minutes, it may not be a full on 30 minutes, and that's okay. If you have osteoarthritis and you've never had exercise therapy, you need to find a program and you need to get registered. And you need to learn how to load your joints appropriately to give your cartilage a fighting chance. So I'm gonna leave you with three take home messages. Number one message, physical inactivity is the first sign of problems. It's not the obesity, it's not the other diseases that you start to have diagnosed. When you start noticing that you're physically inactive, you need to get help and you need to get help now because you are starting down that bad spiral. Number two, everyone with osteoarthritis should have some education, should have some exercise therapy, and if it's appropriate, you need some help with your weight management. And then last but certainly not least, appropriate weight bearing and impact are vital to the health of your joints. And it is okay to have pain when you exercise, but you have to learn how to deal with that, okay? So those are the messages I'm gonna leave you with. If you want, you can stand up and sit down once more while uh, the next speaker gets introduced, thank you.